Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the House of Representatives. This is your state representative, Kerry Condotta. We have passed a major milestone here in the policy cutoff. That was last Friday. Bills that did not get out of committee, did not move to the Rules Committee, are now considered dead for now. And sometimes they can come back. It's strange how that works. But a number of bills that you've inquired about, good and bad, have uh, failed to make the grade. Probably the most mail we've had is about Second Amendment bills. There was a number of gun control bills that would have required registration and things for ammunition and guns. All of those have failed. That is most of the email asking us to uh, pose those bills because they really don't solve any problems, of course. So those have failed. And the ones that also failed that are not good is some of the bills that deal with the Hearst water situation. Our court case on Hearst that defines some problems with well water and whether we're going to be able to access well water. So those bills did not, some of them did not come out of committee. I assume it will be brought back through the budget process that there will be continued talk about that because it really affects the real estate business and property development in general. Of course, we're very, very short of housing as it is, driving housing prices up and decisions like that are really creating a problem for advancing more housing and doing more development. So we've got to get through that. We Hopefully it'll be negotiated later on. We are now moving into fiscal cutoff. This week is different. These are fiscal bills. I spend lots of time in the finance committee, that is the tax committee, and the spending committee, which is appropriations. I will be working from eight until late at night all this week on those bills. It is amazing in appropriations to see the amount of bills coming through. Each one has a price tag attached to it. And yesterday we ran 25 bills that totaled nearly a billion dollars. Now we're gonna do that every day this week. Obviously all of those can't be funded. So in the end, only a handful of those bills will end up surviving in the final budget. Speaking of those budgets, we should start to see some light of those budgets in the next few weeks. That'll give us an idea of the size of the box we're working with and what the potential is for the final numbers. Now, most importantly, still the McCleary decision on the table. We have a Senate version. We have a House Democrat version. There is a House Republican plan that has not been unveiled that will be somewhere in the middle. The problem with all these bills is right now, they cost too much. All of them are too expensive. And what it's doing is taking all the air, all the oxygen out of the room for anything else. And we need infrastructure, and we do need some mental health care, and we do need other things. This is a well-rounded budget. There has to be a well-rounded approach. And the problem is, is every year we seem to put all our money into the education box and everything else goes by the wayside. We cannot afford to do that this year. We cannot let things deteriorate any further, particularly around infrastructure. And like I said, we can't build housing if we don't have infrastructure. So we have to keep an eye on this. I hope the negotiations work out, but I'm afraid that no matter what they come to, it's just gonna to be too darn expensive, whatever plan they came up with. We're gonna to have to pare it down if we're gonna save some of the other programs that are just as important, maybe more important at this point. Well, that's where we're at. It's an exciting time here with lots going on. We'll keep you posted, but the big numbers will be the budget numbers. We should see those in the next week or two. Meanwhile, we'll make it through fiscal cutoff and let you know next week what's alive and what's dead. We'll see you next time.